Calgary to Edmonton. Here in 2014, it's a totally routine trip that thousands of people make every day. We climb into our comfortable, reliable cars and take off at 110 kilometers an hour with the stereo blasting. And in about oh, three hours later, we've reached our destination. But just for a moment. Try to imagine that same journey 100 years ago. Cars, or the horseless carriages they were called, had only been around for about 20 years. They were far from reliable, and there were certainly no highways for them to travel on. The trek from Calgary to Edmonton in 1914 was fraught with peril. From roads, to weather, to mechanical failures, to livestock, and generally, it took days, not hours, to complete. There literally weren't the roads. And this is called a road guide, but if you look at it, the roads aren't paved. They're what I would think of as a trail. <laughs> and in fact, they followed old farm trails. There were ruts, they weren't paved, um, according to Mr. English, who published this guide. They weren't even graded. They just allowed the traffic to pass over them and to knock down any of the bumps that were there. In winter, they were virtually impassable, and in fact, you couldn't drive in winter in many parts of the province. Some article about Alberta talking about road conditions and the way they were at the turn of the century, which I'm really interested in because I have the older cars. And then it mentioned Alberta's first road map in 1914. I thought, oh, 1914. Took the brain cells to come around. They went, I have a 1914 McLaughlin, which is the third, uh, the third car that came out in 1914. Third car in Alberta is what I'm trying to say. So I thought, what a nice little tie-in. You got this Alberta roadmap, it's the 100th anniversary coming up this year. I got the car, it's 100 years old. I thought, it wouldn't be great just to drive that route or try to find where that route was. And you know, you think about Alberta tourism, we're always talking about making people stay in the province and travel to all the small towns. That's what this road was all about. What a nice chance to touch base with all those people and carry that story right from city to city. We're trying our best to stay on the original type dirt, gravel roads, secondary roads, because these cars aren't meant to be on any pavement, really. And uh, we're going to have to travel on some, on some major arteries. That's the only way we can do it. So at that point, we're going to have people uh, with other cars around us yeah. to protect us, because you know we're only going 25, 30 miles an hour top speed. Good, Good luck from here on. <laughs> with the seeds of adventure firmly planted in their minds, Ray and Pat called upon family, friends, and even some strangers to help them embark on what would certainly be the trip of a lifetime. On Monday, August 18th, 2014, their convoy of a 1914 McLaughlin and a 1915 Studebaker would leave City Hall in Calgary, bound for Edmonton, using a 100-year-old map as their guide. Now this is our first official stop, the Balzac General Store. The first real stop on our trip. This is, this is gonna be fantastic. About a month before the August 18th departure date, Ray traveled the route with our film crew as sort of a, a dry run. I love it, can't go wrong. They found out firsthand how hard the back roads can be even on a modern vehicle. As they suffered a flat tire that day, now, hopefully, that would be the worst mechanical trouble they would face on this trip. It's got a little wobble to it. The second part of preparation is, of course, making sure that the 100-year-old cars were up to the task. Ray's 1914 McLaughlin and Pat's 1915 Studebaker are both in remarkable condition and incredibly well-maintained. And, and, and it will go to off as well. But there's still lots of tinkering that needs to be done before a momentous trip like Calgary to Edmonton. Engines checked, tuned, and checked again. It's a parade car, only we're going a little further with it is all. Okay. On a dry run before the trip, Pat and Ray noticed a little shimmy in Ray's McLaughlin. So they decided to pay a visit to an alignment shop at Edmonton and use a little 21st century technology on the 100-year-old car. So this the camera's fine. Camera's fine. Yeah. That's what we're worried about. We're thinking. With 100 year old cars, there aren't any spare parts lying around. So if something breaks, it means you've probably got to make a new part entirely or rebuild a similarly old part from another vehicle. 
so it's imperative to make sure everything is in good working order. With everything checked out on the alignment and the engines in working order, it was time to put the cars on their trailers and get them down to Calgary for the big trip. That's about good there. August 18th would be coming very soon. The first morning of the trip dawns bright and optimistic for the time travelers. After a good night's sleep at the historic Palliser Hotel in downtown Calgary, Ray and Pat are just making some final adjustments before they're scheduled to do a fun little photo op to help the hotel celebrate its 100th birthday. Then, before the cameras even start rolling, before the trip can even begin, disaster strikes. Without warning, one of the McLaughlin's wheels just disintegrated. And with a 100-year-old car, there aren't any spare parts lying around. Well, we're done, buddy. That's what that trip was about, 50 feet. I guess we'll have to do it on a bicycle someday. Now, folks who drive vintage cars are not easily daunted. And after just a couple of minutes of lamentation, a plan begins to form. You got a wheel that'll fit this? Huh? Uh, we're gonna have to do some work, but it's a 25 inch. I've got a wheel and, uh, yeah, I can make it work. We'll have to do a quick change over on the brake drum and the pub, but we can jack it up. First things first, though, they can't be doing all their repairs on the loading dock of the Palliser Hotel. What's the AMA number? I don't know that. Oh, it's 1-800-AMA-HELP. Help is a key word. In the meantime, the Calgary media begin to show up for the photo op. Could have been a lot worse. That's way it's But they are treated to a much bigger story instead. Uh, they, would fix it. they would have probably just driven it into a slough or a river just to make the spokes swell because they're, they're hickory. So using today's technology is not always the best thing. And I think I used epoxy because it, it works really good, right? Works too good because I think the spokes had no movement. They had no flexibility. And I guess what happened is the, the wheel just couldn't take it. The trip of a century down. in jeopardy the before it can even begin. Ray and the crew seem to be taking the attention in stride. I don't know how worse it could get than this. I mean, we, we, you know, your first reaction is, we're done. But you know, we're not done. We're not done, we're gonna get this six. We got another car, we got a backup car. He's gonna go ahead and, and take up some of our obligations. In what seems like no time, the AMA tow truck arrives. The AMA expert Dan and Ray devise a plan to rescue the McLaughlin and get it onto a trailer so they can take it to a safe spot to make the repairs. Dan's going to get it all ready to go. He's going to lift it from the back. He has a plan. And he's going to get it onto the trailer for us. Okay. He said he's going to lift it from the back and we can steer the front of it. Getting set to tow any car with a broken wheel is a painstaking process. But when it's a hundred year old collector's car, things move a little more carefully. I guess that's why some people leave them in museums, right? <laughs> While Dan prepares the McLaughlin to be towed, Pat and Ray and the crew take a spin around the block to do the photo op that they promised the Palliser Hotel. Just in one car instead of two. In relatively short order, Dan manages to get the McLaughlin safely cinched up and loaded onto his truck. Then he gets the old girl safely onto a flatbed truck for transport to the campground in Carstairs where Ray, Pat, and Keith will be able to try and get her roadworthy one more time. Will the trip go on? I think that was the hardest part thinking that it was done for him and that he wouldn't reach, um, reach his goal of finishing it. After a short discussion, it's determined that they'll tackle the first day solo in Pat's Studebaker. So with map, camera crew on board, 
Pat and Ray hit the streets of Calgary, itching to make some history. The first stop is Calgary City Hall. Only about an hour behind schedule. Beautiful. The boys roll up in front and snap some pictures to commemorate the spot where the road guide begins. There's the map. Directions are right on. Using the map as their guide, they head out of town. It's a hill. When you're driving a hundred-year-old car, even intersections can be an adventure. How you doing? Know? <laughs> We're going to Edmonton. Edmonton? You bet. Oh my God. Yeah, hard of hearing. <laughs> Edmonton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're cute. <laughs> we got a little ways to go. Yeah. See you later, girl. You're a funny man. You turn right here. Is my tie flapping around bother you? There you go, baby. Fancy. Before Pretty too fancy. long, Calgary's busy roads and views of subdivisions give way to the rural roads and farmers' fields. Now we're home. However, even on country roads, 1914 hey. can be invaded by Ooh. 2014 pretty quickly, and the travelers are confronted with some big, big Alberta machinery in the oncoming lane. The first town on the route is Balzac. A great opportunity to stop, check the engine, fill up with gas, and maybe even get some pie at the charming Rocking Horse yeah. Cafe. With car and bodies refueled, the Studebaker heads out for the short trip from Balzac to Airdrie. This is also one of the spots where the 100-year road comes closest to the modern-day Queen Elizabeth Highway. One of the stops that Ray and Pat had scheduled along the way is at the Nose Creek Valley Museum in Airdrie. How are you doing? Good, I didn't recognize you. Oh, it's spiffy. You wouldn't have a spare wheel for a, a 14 McLaughlin, would you? No, but I got an 18 McLaughlin wheel. I, I won't let you have those. Might be too big. <laughs> they call that. It's a jug, right? But Yeah, those are uh, they're individually cast. Those are water jugs. On the other side, the valves are both in the... They're, they're exposed, yeah. Yeah, but they, they call the other ones a T, uh, a T head when yeah, the valves right, on each right. side. Wow. In the middle of Airdrie, Right near the center of town is an old iron rivet bridge, which is very likely the bridge listed in the road guide as crossing the Nose Hill Creek in the center of Airdrie. Absolutely love that. Even when you're way behind schedule, there's always a little time for mischief and fun. If you're gonna do anything this whole trip, let's do something crazy like this. We are in the uh, middle of Airdrie. In the middle of Airdrie, and this uh, used to be the old bridge from the uh, original highway of about uh, 1914. The bridge is of the proper era. It's riveted. Uh, they pretty much came to a, a halt with uh, riveted steel bridges in about 1910, but I think the last one was built in 1919 in Canada. Speaking of mischief and fun, more is in store after Eric. When the gang spies a sign reading, this is it. Impassable Road. This is what we want. This is going to be good. Where is Impassable? I've never been there before. No, we haven't. <laughs> Let's see how impassable it is. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they got a saloon there. The first day has been hard, long, and full of disappointment. So now is the time to let off a little steam and travel just the sort of rough-hewn road that a 1915 Studebaker was built for. This is the best side. This one, I think you're going to get bogged in. Somebody's just recently gone through here. Look at those tracks. Yeah, a wagon about 80 years ago. This is good. You're gonna be fine. Boots and wheels get good and muddy. The whole group, including Jerry and Lynn, in the car for the first time today <laughs> since the photo op at the Palliser, share some great laughs. Why don't you get some mud on your face? Just splash some mud on your face. <laughs> Roll around. Don't wanna go down there, Jer. The second scheduled stop of the day yeah. is at a farmhouse listed in the 1914 road guide as a place to stop and use the phone if necessary. The travelers pop in to say hi to the home's current occupant, a gentleman named Phil. With all the scheduled stops out of the way, it's time to head to the Carstairs Municipal Campground, set up camp, and see about getting the wheel fixed on the McLaughlin. While the travelers had been on the road during the day, their good friend Keith had been hustling around central Alberta 
scrounging up a wheel that might just work on the 1914 McLaughlin. This is mine, parts for my cars. <laughs> We're all friends, we all know what needs to happen, what needs to do, and uh, between Calgary and Edmonton, we're the next guys that are coming along with these uh, these cars, and unfortunately, we're smart enough to save the parts. Because when incidents like this happen, you know what happens. <laughs> if you don't have parts, you don't go anywhere, and the car ends up on the trailer back in the garage. This diameter of wheel is 25 inch, which is common over about three years. When you get ones that come off the car and they're good as spares, you know they'll do on short terms or for repairs like this. That's why we don't throw them out anymore. Man's a blessing. He knows this. <laughs> good thing. Not many people know. Cars as vintage as much as Keith does. Before long, it becomes apparent that the guys are going to need a shop with some proper tools to fit the 1916 wheel onto the 1914 car. So Pat reaches out to Phil from the farmhouse they visited that afternoon. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, this is Pat. We stopped at your place today earlier. The wheel we have has about a four-inch hole, so we basically got a. It's just wood we have to cut it out of, even, uh, you know, we could jigsaw it in a, in a pinch, you know, so, but we don't have a jigsaw here, so. Phil, of course, offers yeah. up his workshop and tools, yeah. and with that, a visit? Pat and Keith are off to see if they can get the McLaughlin back on the road. This is an overland wheel. Oh, okay. It's the yeah. same diameter, but of course this is a front wheel, so the hub is smaller for the front as opposed to the rear. Okay. So what we have to do is just enlarge this hole and then what we're going to do is offset the brake drum uh, in between here so we can do the holes for the brake drum here. They're just slightly uh, more elongated out here. Late that night, after a long day on the road, they work. Sawing, shaping, filing, drilling, and doing it all over again to get the mismatched parts to fit and hold. Eventually, everything comes together, and they have themselves a brand new, albeit 100-year-old, wheel. Well, gentlemen. Hey, gentlemen. All Phil, right. Thank you for your help. No problem, ain't I? The only thing left to do is to break the good news to Ray, who has been waiting anxiously back at the camp. That's ready now. How'd you make out at uh, Phil's? You want to tell him or should I? Okay, no good, right? Well, chewed it up. You know, we had uh, such a minimal of tools. We had, you know, we had a, like a job mate jigsaw and a couple of hand files and didn't have really any, you know, pneumatic <coughs> equipment that we could press that axle stub in and out with and cutting that damn uh, perfect circle on the hickory there, well, Job mate was a bit of an exercise, eh? A little bit. So, couldn't do it. We didn't say that. No, we didn't say that. <laughs> Took three okay. guys. We're in good shape Took on three that. Guys, but we had a lot better time than what yeah, you did we're here. Ready, we're ready to roll, Raymond. <laughs> well, thanks for good news, guys. That's Back. fantastic. Go your way a wee bit. Okay, you're good. Straight, straight. straight That's good. All right. Day two begins triumphantly as the McLaughlin rolled off the trailer on four wheels, one of them green instead of blue, but spinning just fine. 30 feet. Figure every day if we go 20 feet, we're going to get there eventually. That felt good. That felt real good. <laughs> the travelers pack up camp and set off to find Edmonton and adventure in two cars as the intended all along. 20 feet yesterday, I'm going for 30 today. Okay, baby, we're moving. Whoa. 581. Right here, quick right. Oh, I know this part. It was all washed out oh, here yeah. last time we were here. Get our hand out, make a turn. Okay, I can do that. I don't yeah. stop. The first town to stop is Didsbury. <gasps> and when you're driving 100-year-old vehicles, that sometimes means maintenance you're pissing water. Oh, well. at an intersection. This STP stands for Studebaker Top Products. It was uh, part of the Studebaker Corporation when it first came out. Really? 
Yeah. You think I, okay. I could be telling you a story though, right? <laughs> no, but I do have a can that has, it has an STP can, a round old STP can. It, it says right on it, Studebaker Corporation. You doing a commercial? Even as the skies turn gray, nothing can dampen the moods of the intrepid travelers as they make Alberta's back roads their own. They stumble upon another impassable road. This one having been washed out by some torrential rains in the days preceding the trip. Steep on this side, shallow on this side. <laughs> this JC water walkers aren't working too well. Oh, she's deep there. That's not deep. Let's roll, guys. Put the get the GoPro on. Yeah, okay, go for it, buddy. Just crawling through. It's going pretty slow. Well, that was nice and easy. Pat and the Studebaker cross without incident. Next, it's Ray's turn in the McLaughlin. Everything starts out fine, but he loses his line and. Oh, come on, did you think I was No! Oh, it's almost. Almost got her. Well, you get stuck. I think you got a rope strong enough to pull us out of there. <laughs> got it, baby, got it, baby, got it, baby. Boom! Next, into Olds, where the crew stopped for lunch before heading into that night's destination, Fort Normando just outside Red Deer. All is going smoothly until the unthinkable happens. Not that wheel no. again. This time, a flat tire. No. See, the thing is, I got a spare, but not for this wheel. Spare for all the other three, but not this one. We are screwed again. <laughs> no, it's coming, it's coming. Oh my God, honey. Should I put the top up? Yeah, I think we will. I don't know how we're gonna fit this tire in time, but so. Now, not only is the team battling a flat tire, but the sky is getting ominous. Well, in the old days, they got flats every 20 miles. We're getting close to that record. Can we do that in 20 minutes? We can do that. Do you want to do that here? Well, where else can you do it? How long would it take to pull this tube out of here? Probably half hour. Half hour for here. Get her jacked up and off the thing. Well, that, that won't was... take a half hour. That would only take like 15 minutes. 15 something. minutes. The gods are angry you know with you. It might go past us. You never know. Oh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go right by. It's not going to hit yeah. us. And the heavens open up. Travelers and film crew alike scramble to find cover while the wind and rain soak everything in sight. Pat takes it better than most. Oh, the alarms of thunder come down on your body. Eventually, the weather lets up, and Ray and Pat are able to get back to the business of changing the tire. Become one with nature. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yes. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, but see the beauty afterwards, isn't there? As I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, is it? I not wait a second this town. Oh, don't you cry for me, come from Someone do a sun dance. Where'd you get it? Yeah. Okay. Get your fingers out of my oh, way. This side always a bitch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll just tap it. Oh, oh. Finally, after about an hour, they've changed the tire and are ready to go. Except for the fact that using nothing but a rusty old bicycle pump is going to take forever to get the tire inflated. What they really need this is an air compressor. Hole. Hole. No now the great thing about Alberta is that there's always someone willing to help out. And if you're really lucky, they've got exactly what you need. You wouldn't have an air compressor, would you? You do? If we got a flat tire, we're just pumping it by hand like a bicycle pump. We need something a little more than that. Do you want something like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, where are we at? There. I get another one that goes to seven. Don't mention the word blow up. If it blows up, put a little left there. Go? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. <laughs> 
Finally, after another long day full of surprises and two hours late, the crew roll into Fort Normando, where friends and music await them. Day three dawns, well, wet. Whether for some, then for others, but nothing can damp the spirits of the travelers. They've got a full morning of events and a full day of travel ahead of them. Once camp is packed up, the two old cars make the short trip into Red Deer to visit the Sunnybrook Farm Museum. There, another group of car enthusiasts. Nice idea. Well, thank you very much. The province and the old cars well, and that's what it's about. And a 1911 McLaughlin await. Wow. Isn't she a beauty? That's only 100 years ago. Yeah. Well, that's not a lifetime. There are some other guests at this party too. The kids from the Sunny Brook Farm day camps. I just wanted to say to the kids, guys, feel free to walk out and take a look at those cars and maybe we'll take some pictures of you guys sitting in them, but don't, don't be worried about touching them. It's all about history and it's in the history. There's no better way to experience history is to get involved. So get out there and touch those cars and look at them, ask a lot of questions because this is your future and a future doesn't exist without the past. Who are all eager for the opportunity to climb all over these living artifacts and especially honk yeah, the horns. The the <laughs> Do it harder, hold it again. Yeah. There you go. It's a quick jaunt to Lacombe for some fun driving around the historic downtown. Hey, there's a pub over there. He's got a smile on his face for some reason. And for some posing in front of the fantastic murals. Wow, I love these. They're beautiful. Sanitarian treatment rooms. Just try to spot oh. what's 1914 and what's 2014 in this picture. Well, that's a perfect spot, no cars, eh? The third day continues perfectly under Alberta skies as the travelers dawdle along through farmers' fields and side roads, stopping only to take photos or visit without a care in the world. Eventually, they get to Pinoka, where they're greeted by the mayor and treated to refreshments in a historic downtown hotel, just like travelers might have done a hundred years ago. Pinoka to Watasco is the longest stretch of serious highway that the group has traveled thus far. But on a beautiful summer evening, traffic is light and the trip passes without incident. The last stretch from Watasquin back to Ray and Lynn's farm, Wahoo, is on the back roads again. It was going through this area and we had lots of big homes and stuff now because a lot of homes are built up for acreages. And there was a fence and there was this beautiful black stallion on our right-hand side. So Lynn was sitting there and I was sitting there. And I'm driving along and said, look at this horse up here. And he's kind of sitting there at the corner. And he was kind of in a stance like this. And you know that movie Black Beauty by Disney? All shiny. And it was just that magic hour. And we're driving along. And I thought, OK, I'll honk the horn to scare him to get a reaction. Right? The horse started galloping. And he started running. And then I was going like 20 miles an hour. And we looked over. And this seemed like hours, but it only lasted about a, you know, 25 seconds, and he ran beside us. Look at that, it's racing the car. Is the horse winning? <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes up. He was running beside us all the way along the fence line, and we just kept pace with him. It was like a race, like the horse and the automobile. It was one of those magic moments in life that you don't get very often. That one will stay with me forever. And then when he got, he got to the end of the fence, he's running out. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if that was a field? But he came to the end of the fence, and he kind of went like that. Pat could do that better, because he got a longer neck. But he went like that and looked over like this and turned 
just to say thank you. That was fun. We just saw he, he beat you to the fence. Yeah. Well, I, I backed off. I was going to honk my horn. I said, no, I don't have to. All of a sudden, he looked at us. I honked my horn. Yeah. Well, whatever it was, he looked at us and he started running. I don't know where that, that got was going. I think he just likes to race cars. Just the cars now. Get the hell out of there. <laughs> A spectacular Alberta sunset greets Ray, Pat, Lynn, and Jerry back to the farm. Hey, we did it! <laughs> and a group of friends and family is waiting for them when they arrive. Uh, have a look at it there. Yeah. All right. Have a, have a look at it. <laughs> Is he actually going to take a bath? He's actually going to jump in. Oh, my God. Ray! <laughs> so, Ray, while you're uh, having a bath, I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever interviewed somebody while having about. How's the trip going so far? Oh, come on in. The water is great. <laughs> the final day. They've had two tough days and one perfect day. What will this day bring? <laughs> Eventually, everyone gets dressed, and the cars are ready to roll for the last leg of the journey into Leduc and on to Edmonton. And on the way into town, Pat decides the group should pay a visit to his mom's nursing home and bust her out for a little joyride. Can I get a hug too? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah, you better hug your son. <laughs> Good. So. Oh, you're dressed up today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, he's finally, finally, he's finally dressing himself for a change. Yeah. 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 Put on your old gray bonnet with the blue ribbons on it while I hitch. Hold on, don't come the shade. It's been arranged that the gang is going to stop at a car dealership in Leduc to see what they might be able to get in trade for their used cars. Is there a sales rep anywhere here? I can help you out here right now, sir. I was just thinking about trading in these two fine automobiles here. Yeah. They got low mileage. These are low mileage cars. Okay. And we want to see what you got in stock. You got some new stuff we can look at? Now this is a Buick? Right over here, Buick Enclave. Oh. Where are you, Matt? I didn't recognize it as a Buick. It's a, that's a Buick. They've made some changes, eh? Do you have anything with a little bigger tire? What size of wheel is that? Uh, well, this is a 19 on this particular unit. It's 19, yeah. Yeah, they changed slightly, eh? So that would be downsizing to me. Mine's 36. That's right. So 19 and be downsizing. A little bit of differences over the years, eh? OK, now have you got a? I see you got side curtains on there. That's right. So there's no breeze coming in? Not at all, no. We have a breeze inside for you to keep you cool. Could I just take a look at it? I can prove it's mine. You can prove it's yours? Yeah. Any accidents? Uh, let's see, the last 100 years, let's see, I've been around for yes. 60. I, it may have hit a, a gopher and a couple tree stumps and a warthog once. 100 years newer. Isn't that something, a four-door sedan now? Yeah. All kidding aside, I mean, look at the, the last 100 years where we've come. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. You've got your navigation, full touch screen controls in this. Navigation, imagine that. Yeah, it'll so tell you, you where you're going. So what we did, we follow the map, and now you can this punch it in. Just the map right in there. So you, we'll have to punch in our map so you can, so That's people can right travel that one. A quick visit to Schwab's dealership is fun, but ultimately, Everyone leaves in the same car they arrived in. The team makes a quick stop to fuel up and steal themselves for the road ahead. A 31-kilometer jaunt along Highway 2 into Edmonton and the heart of Old Strathcona. The drive into Edmonton is triumphant. 
Word of the 100-year-old car seems to have spread on social media and via word of mouth. And most cars that pass are joyously honking and waving. Traffic slows in and around the little convoy as people take in the old-timey vehicles put putting along on one of Edmonton's busiest thoroughfares. The trip seems to go quickly, and before they know it, Ray, Pat, and their companions are in front of the old post office on White Avenue, where their trip is destined to end. Right. Done. Up, well, Pat. Good one. Good one. Good trip. There ain't nothing wrong with this at all. No drinking on the street. No. They throw me in jail. We'll drink. We'll drink in jail. <laughs> Let's open this baby up and celebrate in front of the cars. You got your glasses? We don't need glasses. We don't need those things. We got four, glasses. four brand new glasses here. You want to use them? No, we don't use glasses. <laughs> there we go. Congratulations, guys. We made it. Oh! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh that's sweet. Oh, does that taste good? You give it to Pat oh, first. Uh, I drank first. Feel that's why I did. I tell you. Oh, that's I good. I admire you guys so much. Yeah. Should have had Lynn drink first. First time you smelled good. Yeah, yeah that's good. We had it's a like <laughs> We did. Didn't do any good. <laughs> oh, well, let's see that bottle off. Get rid of the evidence. And the hundred year road has been conquered. It's always fun to recreate history if you can. You learn a lot about the history when you do it. You know, it's uh, it promotes the hobby and you know, that's uh, Hopefully, could possibly bring some new people into the hobby, and uh, you know, it just uh, it seems like it was a hundred years, and it seemed like it had to be done. Uh, we learned that uh, why it would have taken so long to go from Calgary and into Edmonton in those days. We learned that, uh, you know, like back in the day when you had a problem, you know, you went to any resource you could find, and everybody wanted to chip in and help and keep you going, and uh, and. Uh, the, the, Alberta's uh, got some beautiful back roads that uh, people should slow down and enjoy. I would like to say that uh, go after your dreams. It sounds pretty hokey to say that because you, know, you read that everywhere in literature. But uh, seek out what gives you pleasure, visually around you or, or an idea. Try to try to point yourself in that direction because there's nothing more fascinating in, in my life is history and I think this has been said before because you don't really know where you're going until you've explored the past So, because you know your parents history learn more about that because you'll be surprised the stories you'll you'll hear and then you can maybe you know, if someone tells you about a farmhouse that your grandfather had go look at it. go find out where it was it'll give you such pleasure so I think to me I'd say yeah go after those those images those dreams that you've thought of and try to explore that so what does the hundred year road mean well, aside from how much fun it was, it's important in this province of industry and innovation to turn back every once in a while to think about what came before us, who came before us, and how they lived, how they traveled, and how they adventured. Thanks to travelers like Ray and Pat, we've gotten a taste of how to travel the 100-year road. <laughs>